Hey everybody, it's Sam SideQuest and welcome to another manga haul for summer 2021. I know it's been a while since my last video, so I'll have a clip at the end of the haul with a bit of an explanation. But without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into the haul. So starting off we have One Punch Man Volume 22, and right off the bat I really love this cover. This volume focuses a lot around Child Emperor, and we get to see a lot of great moments for his character. He kind of comes to terms with his morals and what it means to be a hero, as well as we get to see a lot of cool action with his creations, and he's just a character that I really do love. And this is just an awesome volume in general. Next we have Attack on Titan volumes 32 and 33, and there's going to be one more volume left until the completion of this series. And yes, I have finished it, and I'm going to hold off on giving my opinions on the ending until I have the final volume, because I do want to reread it to go over my opinions in general. But these two volumes themselves, I really did enjoy. I felt like they had a lot of really em emotionally impactful moments for some of the side characters that we've grown to love. And I thought they do a good job of building up to the epic climax that volume 34 is building up to. Uh, as far as if that climax ending pays off uh, will vary between person, but for me I'm going to read the volume one more time to, to come to terms with my thoughts. Next up we have Wotakoi Volume 4, Love is a Hard for an Otaku. Fans of the channel know that this is one of my favorite slice of lives slash rom-coms, and this volume is no exception, I really did enjoy it. The story really focuses around three relationships for six different people that are all grown adults working in, in the corporate world in modern day Japan, but they're also otakus, and so from, from that aspect I find a lot of relatability, but aside of that I really love the relationships in this story. And I also love the characters and, and the pop culture references that are made that can have for some really funny moments. But if you're looking for a slice of life, I highly recommend Wodakoi. Next up we have volumes 9 through 12 of Beastars. And this is another ongoing series that I pick up each volume and really am enjoying. While I think the quality has dipped a bit since the beginning arc, it's still a series that I really enjoy. I love the relationships and characters as well as the ongoing main story and plot. The quick sell for Beastars is that it is Zootopia-like in the sense that it is animatronic animals living in day-to-day -day lives like humans. That's a bit where the similarities end because the relationships, the characters, and the main story are a lot deeper and more mature than Zootopia. While the main storyline is, is very interesting, it has to do with a student being mysteriously killed in the high school that our main characters go to. The subplots are also where the, a lot of the meat for Beastars is. We see this conflict going on between the herbivores and carnivores that's growing more and more tense. We also see the one of the main side characters, Louie, who has branched out of his life as a high schooler and joined a very feared gang. And definitely recommend it if any of this art is intriguing you. So next up we have 20th Century Boys Omnibus Volume 10 and Volume 11. And this is going to conclude the Omnibus for 20th Century Boys. From what I've read with 20th Century Boys, I really do enjoy the series so far. A lot of people say it's Urasawa's best work. The quick pitch of the plot is it is the story is based around a group of childhood friends that have separated in adulthood but are reunited due to the tragic death of one of their close friends. And so it's a crime mystery based around that group of friends figuring out how that death is tied to a up and rising cult within 20th century Japan. And it's just really well written and I am enjoying it so far. Next up we have Yu Yu Hakusho Volumes 1 through 10, and as you can see I am missing Volume 2. If any of you within the US know where I can find this for a reasonable price, please let me know because I'm struggling to find it in order to complete my set. But this is a series that I hold a ton of nostalgia for. I'm a huge Tagashi fan, I love Hunter x Hunter, and Yu Yu Hakusho is a series that I grew up as a kid watching late at night in Toonami. I really found myself intrigued with a main character, Yusuke. And so the story is based around him. He's a high school boy who's a bit of a he's a bit of a knucklehead. He's a bit of a bad guy, but deep down he has a really solid heart. And what happens is he jumps in front of a car and tragically dies in order to save a little kid who is in the way in the middle of the, the road. But Yusuke is then brought back to life as a spirit detective within Japan, and you get to see him grow his abilities, his, his spiritual abilities, in order to defend Earth against different evil spirits and demons. And you also get to see him grow with a group of friends to help fight alongside him. Now as you can see from this art, it does look a bit dated as this is a series that started in the 90s. But I think that re that's really what adds to the charm of Yu Yu Show. For those who are fans of Hunter x Hunter, you get to see where a lot of the foundation for that series is built off of. 
And in my opinion, Yusuke is Togashi's best main character that he has ever created. It's got great characters. The side characters like Kuwabara are just really well written and I really love Yu Yu Hakusho. I definitely recommend it. And then lastly, I did pick up the rest of the volumes that are out for Berserk, so volumes 32 to 40. And over the past year, Berserk is a series that I've really fallen in love with. And over the, the past month following the tragic news of Kintaro Mira's death, it's crazy to see how big of an impact one individual had on so many people through his work from Berserk. And it really is warranted. Berserk is truly a masterpiece and has some of the best characters, art, and story writing that I have seen in, in any story, not just manga, any story in general. So for those who are wondering if Berserk is still worth checking out, despite the fact that it's more than likely never going to have a finished ending, I strongly encourage you to check it out for yourself. This is an idea that I'm that I'm been coming to terms with, especially coming from Attack on Titan, but the fact that so many people value the merit of a series based off of the ending. But when in fact for Berserk, every single chapter is truly an amazing experience in itself. Guts is such an amazing character, and I know so many people within the manga community know how beloved of a character he is, as well as the highly esteemed Golden Age arc, which is one of the best, if not the best arc within the manga medium itself. Quick sell on Berserk. It is a very mature series, so if that's not something you're looking for, it definitely earns that 18 plus mark. But the art, the characters, man, guts, and the, the cast of side characters like Griffith are just so well developed and so unique in, in their own right. But the art style and the detail that you can see in some of these panels is truly some of the best within manga, and I cannot recommend Berserk enough. So that's gonna conclude it for the manga haul, guys. Thank you so much for your patience with me and sticking around. I will be making more videos in the future, and I really hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Peace out. Hey guys, just wanted to quickly give you all an explanation as to where I've been the past eight months. Um, real quickly, I want to say that it's you know nothing serious. I'm not in any, wasn't in any danger. Um, there's no issues with my health. Uh, I just needed to take a break. And to put it simply, the reason behind why I needed to take a break was just that I wasn't finding any joy from reading manga or making videos. To give you all some context as to how I got to this point, I just wanted to walk you all through my journey with, with manga collecting and YouTube in general. So I really started collecting and reading manga about five, six years ago. And I, can, I look on that time so fondly. I remember just the magical feeling that I had when I first discovered manga. The first thing I ever read was a box set of Death Note and I immediately and I immediately fell in love with it. I remember I, I physically could not get enough of manga. It was what I was watching on YouTube as well as reading. I remember watching guys like NZ Anime Manga and Insidious Swede and I loved every video they put out. I was just enamored with reading manga in general. And I began collecting more and more, I, you know, grabbed box sets, things like Bleach and One Piece. And my small little collection slowly started to build and I cherished it so much. I had read everything I had. I loved it. But I found myself not having anybody really to talk about it with. And that, and that was the hardest thing for me. So eventually, after talking to some people within the manga community, specifically Flip Otaku, I eventually decided to make my first video. You know, I grabbed my phone, started shakily recording my collection, and I put up a manga collection video, you know, just on a whim. One take, put it up. I remember drawing my thumbnail. It, it looked really rough, but I had really great reception to it. I remember all the comments. I got so excited responding to each one, and I was so proud of this video that I put out. And so that's where it took the, the YouTube channel took off from there. And I started making more and more videos. I found that I really enjoyed the process of making, editing, and creating videos. I found a lot of fulfillment from that cycle. And so I started making reviews, and I could see my videos getting better and better in quality with each one. And it was something that I took a lot of pride in. But then I went through something that I'm sure most manga collectors and most manga YouTubers went through. And that really started to have this really started to happen about a year, year and a half ago. And that was just buying manga that I wasn't even really enjoying. People see these huge ginormic hauls and they look amazing in a photo. But when you take 
a step further and, and think about what is behind that picture, it's really just buying stuff to put on a shelf because there's no humanly way people can read these gigantic, these huge amounts of manga every month. And that's also a big temptation when you're making manga videos is, okay, people love these big hauls. All I got to do is buy more manga and I'm going to get more views. And I found this this weird switch turned into me where I wasn't really finding joy in the manga that I had in my collection, although there was a lot that I still loved and cherished deeply. What I was what twisted for me was I was looking I was more excited looking forward to the manga that I could buy versus the excitement I had reading the manga I owned. And that's really not a good place to be for a manga collector or a manga reader in general. Because through that process, through just looking forward to what I'm buying next, it completely takes the joy out of the hobby itself and cherishing each volume that you have and appreciating it for all the hard work that was put into it. And so eight months ago, I pretty much hit my, my point where I was like, I can't buy any more manga. My collection is getting out of control. I'm not even, I'm reading you know half of what I'm getting in a haul, but I'm not even really enjoying it that much. I'm burning through what I can read so I can feel less bad about the 60 volumes that are coming in next month. And so that's where I called it for myself. So for about three months, I really didn't read any manga or, or watch any anime at all. But for those of you who follow me on Twitter, know that I've still been pretty active there. It's because I started to find the joy of reading manga again. You know, four months ago, I picked up series here and there. I caught up to Vinland Saga. I caught up to One Punch Man, whatever it is. I read Vagabond. And I this, this joy that I had for it at the beginning started to rekindle. And I started to remember why I had a channel in the first place, because I loved this medium of entertainment so much. I love manga, and I just wanted to talk about it with people and share my thoughts. And so that's where we're at today. I am going to be making videos officially now. For those of you who subscribe to me strictly for those big hauls that I had, you know, I, I hate to break it to you, but that, that's not going to be a standard going forward. I am going to have you know some big hauls here and there, but that's not something that I want my channel to be founded on, is just these giant hauls. What I can promise you is that the hauls and reviews I have, it's going to be stuff that I'm passionate about, stuff that I have read and I feel excited to talk about. And there's also going to be a level of quality that I, I find pride in. So I wanted to share that quick update with you guys. I'm excited for, for my future videos. I'm excited to talk to you guys in the comments. It's crazy that I've been gone for like eight months and my sub count has not dropped at all. And that really just goes to show how great you guys have been to me from the jump. In my comment section, I feel like I have so much interaction with you guys. I feel like I always have a huge chunk of comments within my videos and I love talking to you guys. I try to reply to every comment within there. And that's what gets me most excited about this is creating, you know, the creative inner aspect of making, sketching and, and finishing a video, but also the interaction, the community aspect. And that's really what I what got me into this community in the first place was talking about it with other people. And that's why I love these videos so so much is because I get to talk about it with you guys. So that's going to do it for the explanation, guys. Thank you for, for being patient with me. Uh, excited for the future of this channel, and I'm, I'm excited for future hauls, future reviews, and um, getting to talk to you guys. So thank you guys for sticking to the end. If you did, it shows you're a real day one, and I uh, hope you guys have a great rest of your night. With that, I'm going to head out. Peace.